The U.S. military in a race to keep our weapons out of the hands of our enemies. Military personnel have reportedly landed in Ukraine to try to keep track of the huge trove of powerful weapons and equipment we've sent over there since Russia's invasion in February. Ukraine has committed to guarding and accounting for our supplies, but senior U.S. officials say it's, quote, unlikely that would happen flawlessly. Can we trust that our weapons won't fall into the wrong hands and maybe even be used against us in the future? How do we prevent that effectively? Joining me now to discuss is retired Marine Corps Sergeant and Fox News contributor Joey Jones. Joey, it's great to see you as always. Look, I'm all for equipping the Ukrainians. I'm rooting for the Ukrainians against the Russians, uh, really in every way. This also is a concern for me, and I think many Americans, we saw that massive amount of equipment fall into the wrong hands in Afghanistan. It's not exactly comparable, but we have to keep track of this stuff carefully. Are we confident that's happening? How can we do that properly? No, we're not confident at all. Uh, one of the ways we can do it properly is we can actually put GPS trackers in ordnance. We don't do it very often, and honestly, it's a pretty top secret op when we do, so I'm not, I won't talk too much about it. But the reason why I want to come on and talk about this, guys, this, this directly affects the job I used to do in the Marine Corps and that my brothers are still doing now, and sisters. And so to paint a picture for what happens here is if any of this ordnance, one, gets used in a civilian setting, so say, say Russia captures our ordinance from Ukraine and uses it anywhere in Ukraine or even in 10, 20 years somewhere in Russia. That ordinance is so specific that we have deals with other countries, even Russia, that we may go in and risk our lives to remove that ordinance if it doesn't fire properly and get it out of a bad place or civilian setting. And so one of the risks we have here by sending any of our ordinance into this battlefield is that if any of it is stuff that Ukrainians aren't trained or even Russians, if it ends up in 20 years in a Russian village somewhere, if they're not trained on this ordinance, we're the ones that have to go over there, hopefully take it apart safely and probably get hurt doing it. We have acquisition teams around the world buying ordinance on the black market and you would be shocked at what is seen in Africa, in Europe, in Asia, every single year that we created and built and, and could only get there through our government. And we have men and women that go and basically in disguise and buy it back and try to get it back to somewhere in Europe or the Middle East that is a friendly country so that our men and women can go over there and take it apart or transport it safely. I know one guy that lost both of his legs in the slums of a country and almost died in the hospital from infection. The U.S. government had very little hands on with this guy because of the nature of his job. But that's the kind of worry that I have. If we don't track this weapon system, it's going to get more Americans hurt and killed in the future. And that's a huge problem. Joey, let me ask you about this. We mentioned it earlier in the show. In Florida yesterday, the president again told this story briefly as like an offhand comment that his son, Bo, died in Iraq, uh, which, of course, he didn't. He died years after he left Iraq in Maryland after serving in, in political office. The president has said this a few different yeah. times now. How does that sit with you? It's absolutely disgusting. Uh, it, it denigrates the graves of every service member that died in Iraq every time he says it. And I really don't give a good dang why he says it or what he thinks. The truth is, my buddy Dave Lyon went to Afghanistan, got his legs blown off and his hips blown to pieces, lived in a halo around his hips for months, did everything to recover, and four years later died of a heart attack, laying on a weight bench in a gym here in the States. We don't get to say that Dave died in Afghanistan, and he sure as hell doesn't get to say that his son died in Iraq. I have all the respect in the world for Bo Biden, and there's a chance that his cancer was a result of his time in Iraq, but there's just as strong, if not stronger, a chance that it was genetic. And to sit here and draw that line for no other reason than to make a political point is absolutely disgusting. And if he's too old to understand that, then he's too dang old to be in the White House or to be the commander in chief because he's the one that withdrew troops from Afghanistan and left 13 to die. Mm -hmm. He's the one that would be in charge if we went to war tomorrow. And if he doesn't understand that sacrifice any more than to create this own narrative about his own son, then guys, he doesn't deserve to be in the White House. I mean, I can't tell you how disgusting this is. Joey, on a much lighter note, very quickly, this weekend, big game, your dogs against Tennessee, who you got? <laughs> 
I don't know if that's a lighter note, man. As passionate <laughs> as we are, we're worried, but I'll be there. I'll be center. I'll be on the 50-yard line, and I'll be cheering the dogs. And, uh, hey, if Tennessee wins, so be it. But I think the dogs have it handily. There you Two go. Touchdowns. Well, SEC, it just means more, <laughs> they say. I'm a Big Ten guy, but they're pretty that's passionate right. down there. All right, Joey, great to see you. <laughs>